Welcome to Eat the Travel. In today's episode, we bring you to the beautiful city of Durango. This is our first visit to Durango, but we're no strangers to Durango necessarily. We've got friends and family from Durango, so they all told us we had to check out Paseo Constitución, and that's where we're starting today's tour. Paseo Constitución is a walking street filled with bars, restaurants, shops, souvenirs, tattoo parlors. Anything you want in the city, you'll probably find here. It's hustle and bustling on Saturdays and Sundays, but even during the weeknights, this is a whole different vibe. In our previous video, we showed you what nightlife looks here, so be sure to check that one out if you haven't already. One of the things you'll notice, like most of the most beautiful cities in Mexico, is the colonial architecture, and Durango is no exception. It's actually way prettier than I thought. And that's also because I had no idea what the city was going to look like. Whoa, is that a Giordano's I see? I think that says... Oh, it says Giardino's. But they have... Chicago style pizza. Deep dish pizza. What is deep dish pizza doing in Durango? Wow, it makes sense. There's a lot of, there's a huge population of people from Durango and Chicago, especially in Cicero, Melrose Park. Uh, shout out to everybody out there. But you can tell there's a direct influence from Chicago and Durango with this Chicago style pizza. We're gonna skip today just because we're in Mexico. Once we go back to Chicago, maybe we'll give that. Whoa. Giardinos. Giardinos. Not Giardinos. <laughs> Not to be confused. So one thing I can point out from Durango's Centro Historico is that it's really colorful yeah. coming from like Zacateca, San Luis, or Taxco where everything is cantera, just all kind of pinkish, Stone. whitish. Right here in Durango it's so colorful and it the palm trees make you feel like you're almost like close to a beach. Yeah, and like we're the not. Caribbean. I think we're about, about maybe three hours from Mazatlán. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's very close to the beach, but I am fairly surprised to see palm trees here. And this weather, it's so pleasant. Like I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt and it's a little hot because we're walking around, but otherwise it's really not too humid. It's not too dry, not uncomfortably hot, just warm. So, and granted we are here in the month of August and we have been told that it can snow. Like the last time it snowed was three years ago. It is a crazy phenomenon around here, so it doesn't happen very often, but the fact that it can snow is it means it gets a little chilly. It's pretty cool. So overall, really nice weather. What the heck is that? Tacos de cipolite, encuerados, <laughs> naked tacos. Naked tacos. Now we found out that these tacos, what they do is they put cueritos de puerco, it's like pork skin, uh, and they uh, place them on top of the tacos. They fry the tacos and place them on, and play the cueritos on top of the tacos. Uh, we haven't tried them yet, but Maybe, maybe so. Calle Constitución leads you to the main center of Centro Histórico, which is Plaza de Armas. And of course, you have a beautiful church in the center of the Centro Histórico. But it's really nice to be able to come and hang out on a beautiful day like today. We're getting close to the best time of the year in Mexico, which is a Mexican independence. So we started to see that they started decorating with red, white, and green all over the city. So we're super excited. Hopefully tonight they can light those, those uh, lights on. This is Plaza de Armas, the center of town where families gather both on the weekends and during the week. And it's also the place where tourists can come get information at the kiosco behind me. You can get tour bus tickets and also get picked up for the Wild Wild West show, or that's what we call it. It's called El Paseo del Viejo Este. You can get picked up and brought right back here for free. If we had known that, we wouldn't have paid Ubers there and back, but you can avoid that mistake because now you know. If you continue walking through Calle Constitución and walk all the way through the Plaza de Armas on the other side of Calle Constitución, you have what we call Hollywood Boulevard. Durango considers themselves the Hollywood of Mexico because there have been so many films that have been filmed here in the state of Durango. Films such as The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, Don't Stop Rain in Durango, Las Bandidas with Salma Hayek and Penelope Cruz. There are plenty of movies that have been filmed here, especially at Viejo Oeste. But this is one strange fact that I just know. John Candy actually passed away filming a movie here in Durango at close to Sombrerete. It's really cool, we walk down the street, it's super, super cool to see the stars 
of the people who have actually filmed movies here, stars like Kevin Costner, James Caan, Salma Hayek, Richard Gere, and even right here you can see Penelope Cruz and Salma Hayek hanging out like they did in the movie. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, if this video goes viral, Jenny and Kevin will have their own star and their statue here. The <laughs> Eat Bala Travel Hollywood star in Durango. It would be such an honor. People from Durango, if you're watching, ya sabes, ponlos, ponlos, ponlos ahí. A lot of these statues are people I just don't know. But it's really cool to see and know that it's a, such a historic landmark for movies, both American and Mexican movies. Who's this guy? He looks familiar. Comment down below if you know who this is. We've reached the end of Paseo Constitución, or at least the Hollywood Boulevard part of it, as we like to call it. I don't think it's actually known as that. That's just something we made up. But then you get to the end of it, and you get to El Paseo de la Alameda. One of our other favorite places to hang out in Durango is El Paseo de las Alamedas. Any city that has an Alameda, we make sure to check it out because we love the green spaces. Here, it's about a kilometer and a half walkthrough of El Paseo. And alongside on the street, you can get coffee, tea, uh, gorditas, of course. And it's just a nice, relaxing place to come hang out, work out, and just pass time. Another cool thing that you'll see in Paseo de las Alamedas is the statues commemorating the important people of Durango and the Mexican history and revolution. Durango is rich with history, so today we're going to be visiting El Museo de Francisco Villa, which is in front of Plaza Fundadores, and I'm excited to learn about this super popular Mexican icon. I'm sure there's a lot I don't know. It's a beautiful museum, it charges 25 pesos per person, and I think it comes with a guided tour. The museum tour is offered in Spanish and explains the murals on the first floor. Francisco Villa was known as the centaur of the north because he was always on horseback. Francisco Villa was born as Doroteo Arango here in the state of Durango in 1878. Francisco Villa was one of the most important military persons during the Mexican Revolution, during the Porfirio Diaz regime. Here in Durango, he's a well-respected soldier and icon because he helped a lot of the communities where he grew up in. Uh, with, he established schools, helped people with clothing, food, and certain things during a, a really tough time in Mexico. But he was also known to be very violent, uh, especially if you weren't on his side. Uh, this museum is really, really beautiful. It has some gorgeous art all around the museum and a lot of the story of what he did and was able to accomplish in his short life. By the way, have you all ever heard the quote, Pancho Villa con sus dos viejas a la orilla? This guy had over 25 women and over 25 children and that's only from the children that we know. So I wonder if that quote actually does come from that because hey, if you were born in Durango near the area where he was around, you guys might be related. Comment down below, let me know what you think about that. Outside the Pancho Villa Museum is the lovely Plaza Fundadores, an homage to the colonization and mestizaje that led to the Durango we have today. But we prefer to honor Durango through its food, so it's time to go on a gordita hunt. It's called Gorditas Doña Mari, and I, I picked this spot just because it has a abuelita's face on it, and it, looks, it feels legit. These gorditas here are the harina. So it looks like a tortilla from a burrito that they use for a burrito, and they just open it up. With it's flour. not like it's not like corn tortilla, so it's yeah, it's flour. Yeah. No luck. We haven't found chile pasado. It looks like we're not gonna find it here in Durango. It's not it's very common around here, so maybe it's something more from the north. I have given up. I look forward to going back to Chicago and having my gorditas de chile pasado. But it's cool, look. A gordita de harina is different. It almost looks like a gordita uh, made out of the tortilla from the burrito and we cut in half. This one is the asado rojo. So, I don't know, they almost look borderline healthy. <laughs> look, whole wheat. Yeah, that's what I said. Mm. Damn, they taste healthy. Yeah, right? <laughs> Oh, good. We ordered three gorditas, but I think I am good enough with one. These are huge, almost the size of two gorditas. So far, my favorite one is Jenny's, the picadillo verde. Mmm. It's super spicy. That's one thing you'll find in the north. Really spicy salsas, and I love it. This is the 
kind of places that surprise me. These little alleys with beautiful stonework and fancy sushi restaurants that make me go, what? This is here? I love it. The heck? Another Chicago style pizza? The entrance to the Teleferico feels like such a secret. It's starting to drizzle rain a little. So we're hoping we still get to get on. So this Teleferico stop is really, really cool. It almost looks like an airport slash bar place. You have to wear cubreboca. It's still mandatory for you to wear it. But if you don't have one, don't worry. Because there's a little vending machine right here for 10 pesos. You can get your cubreboca. It used to be filled up with gums and candy and stuff like that. No, no, no. We're in, this is 2022. Still need this in Mexico. This is a big teleferico, isn't it? I feel like 10 people in there. <laughs> When you get to the other end of the Teleferico ride, it takes you to the Mirador de los Remedios where you can see a beautiful view of the city and a really cool gift shop with mezcal, with scorpions in them. I think we should take one of these little bottles. Dude. Little baby scorpion. Did we tell you or did we not tell you that this is the land of the scorpions? For a reason. And these are real, all right? 100%. Yeah, we got one. So let's go take shots. Open it, open it, open it. Just in case something happens to me, it happened here. The church sold it to me, right? Look. Uh. Oh my god. What? You're gonna need a bigger bottle. Excuse me? <laughs> it's so good. It's good? Yeah. Oh my god. They removed the poison from these things, right? The tour guide said that Durango has the, the second most poisonous species of scorpions here. Let's hope this one's not it. Oh, that is tasty. <laughs> what? Oh, this feels so weird. Okay. Well, friends, that brings us to the end of the Teleferico ride and the end of this vlog. We hope that you enjoyed this tour of Durango with us. We certainly really enjoyed this city. We look forward to your comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like button for this video and together we will continue growing. Before we say goodbye though, we want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon members who are our biggest supporters and the people who are the most special to us in this journey. So thank you so much for sticking by us. And if you want to join the Eat By La Travel membership on Patreon, be sure to check it out on the link below. Also, don't forget to check out our store. We have cool t-shirts like these. Okay, se cuidan, se bañan. Y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Bye. Bye. <laughs>